So, this will be the last lecture of uh, module 11 and in this I will recap all that you have learnt and then I will also uh, do some practice problems. So, to recap we started uh, in this module we basically talked about uh, error estimates, probability and probability distributions. So, we started with, uh, with talking about discrete and continuous random variables and we talked about uh, uh, random variables and their and their we talked about probabilities and probability distributions here okay then uh, we talked a lot about the binomial distribution which is one kind of uh, distribution of discrete random variables then we talked about poisson distribution and gaussian distribution and then uh, and then in the last lecture i briefly discussed error estimation least square fit and correlation functions now, this, this material is covered very nicely in Macquarie in chapters 21 and 22 okay, and also Krasig in chapters 22 and 23. So, now let us do a few practice problems okay. and uh, I should, I should uh, say that you know these are tools that we have been using and lot of the, uh, lot of the mathematics that is involved is, uh, is things that we have already seen before. Okay. But in any case, let us go and do a few practice problems. Okay. So, the first problem is uh, uh, what is called a one dimensional random walk. So, here a particle is on a 1D lattice of size A. Okay. So, just to clarify I will show you what this looks like. So, you have uh, this is what we mean by a 1D lattice is if this is the x axis okay, then you have uh, various points. This is 0 A 2A, 3A and so on. So, you have th this is a lattice, a one dimensional lattice minus 2A and it goes on okay. And your part and the particle is on this lattice of size A uh, and uh, so, so what your particle does is it sits on one of the sides at, uh, at time 0 it is on this side okay. Then uh, it hops to the, and then and then and then it 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 goes to the right with probability PR, to the left with probability PL. Uh, well, well, okay, okay. For now, for now, let me let me uh, set it stays in its position with probability one minus PR, and let me set this to zero. Okay, so we'll set this to zero. Okay, so. Uh, what it does it every step it either moves to the left or to the right okay and uh, it moves to the, to the left with pr and uh, left with pl and right with pr okay and uh, obviously pl plus pr equal to 1 okay but they need not be equal to each other okay now what is its average position x after n steps that is t equal to n delta t Okay. So, now uh, what you can ask is, uh, so, so to solve this okay, we, we say that uh, what is probability that out of n steps, m steps are to the right exactly m steps okay and uh, this is this is basically your p of m okay which uh, uh, which you would write as uh, n factorial divided by m factorial n minus m factorial p right of m, p left of n minus m and p left is just uh, uh, p right minus uh, 
so I will replace p left by 1 minus p right. So, now the average position So, if exactly m steps are to the right, okay. So, uh, okay, okay. Well, let me let me first say. So now, position corresponding to to exactly m steps to the right and n minus m steps to left. Okay, so, what is the position? So, where does it end up? Okay, now, now, you can say that if it makes m to the right, it would have gone m times a, okay, but it has gone n minus m to the left. Okay, so, it is m times a minus n minus m times a. is equal to 2 m minus n times a. Okay. That is where it will end up if it does exactly m step to the right it will end up at 2 m minus n times a and remember this can be less than 0 also. Okay. So, now average position is given by 2 m minus n times a times p of m okay, and sum over m equal to 0 to n of this. Okay. So, this is equal to twice sum over m equal to 0 to n m times p m okay, and I will I will take, uh, I will divide by a, I will take the a outside. Okay. So, twice m times p m minus n times sum over m equal to 0 to n p m. Okay. Now, uh, we know the binomial distribution. Okay. So, so since we know the since we uh, since we know that this satisfies the binomial distribution and uh, it is normalized so this is just n okay and this is the average value of m corresponding to the binomial distribution okay and uh, what we saw okay a binomial distribution with uh, with this quantity pr okay so so then the average value of m after n trials is just n times p r n times p r okay so uh, so i can write this as n times 2 p r minus 1 and 1 i'll write as uh, i'll write as p r minus p r plus p l is 1 okay so this is so average value of x equal to n times a times p r minus p l. Okay. So, uh, and this makes intuitive sense, okay. this makes sense because uh, in each step there is a p r chance that it goes to the right and p l chance that it goes to the left. Okay. So, in each step uh, on average it moves this distance and so in n steps it will move n a times this distance. Okay, but you can formally get this from this uh, argument. Okay, so this is a use of the binomial distribution. Okay, and uh, actually, actually, uh, the there is an important uh, there there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, other connections that you can make. Okay. Uh, okay, so the the random walk. Okay, is actually related to 
diffusion. Okay. Uh, this is a very important connection between the random box and diffusion. Okay. Now, uh, what you can see is that uh, if, uh, if P r equal to P l, okay, then average value of x equal to 0. That means, on average it will just be around that. Okay. However, average of x square is not equal to 0. Okay, this is uh, this is what is meant by diffusion in the sense that uh, on average you don't uh, you you haven't translated, but but the particle is diffusing. So so you imagine that I open a scent bottle, okay? I open a perfume bottle, then the perfume doesn't go straight to its uh, to its target. It sort of randomly hits around and you know uh, executes this brownian motion and then eventually it it spreads out okay so uh, so uh, average of x is zero but average of x square will not be zero in this case okay so uh, the the point is there is a there is an intimate connection between random box and diffusion okay and you can see this if you calculate the average of x square the same problem you can take and calculate the average of x square and you'll find that it is not equal to 0 even when pr equal to pl okay okay now the next problem is uh, for a gas of particles of mass m at temperature t calculate average value of vx average value of vx square and vx vy so this is a fairly straightforward problem so what you'll say is that uh, probability distribution of vx is equal to m by 2 pi kbt you recall the maxwell boltzmann distribution raised to half e to the minus half m vx square by kbt okay so this is a probability distribution of Vx, okay. So you can calculate average of Vx is equal to so uh, m by two pi kbt raised to half integral from minus infinity to plus infinity Vx e to the minus m Vx square by two kbt dVx and uh, now you the range of integration is minus infinity to infinity uh, the gaussian function is an even function of vx the and vx is an odd function so this is equal to 0 so you have an integral of an odd function from minus infinity to plus infinity that is 0 and uh, if you calculate vx square okay this is just m by to half integral minus infinity to plus infinity v x square e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t d v x. Okay. And uh, <coughs> this can actually be worked out. Okay. So, uh, so again, again you use your gamma functions, okay, can use okay so uh, this so you can show so uh, to show v x square is equal to k b t by m Okay, you can you can show this. It's not a very difficult thing to show. Okay, now what about v x times v y? Okay, now uh, now note that p of v x v y is equal to p of v x into p of v y. Okay, so v x and v y are independent variables. Okay, so for a gas at equilibrium, you in fact, in fact, uh, p of v x v y v z equal to p of v x p of v y p of v z. 
So, basically v x and v y are independent variables. So, average value of v x times v y is equal to average value of v x times average value of v y and this is equal to 0 because average value of v x is 0, average value of v y is 0. Okay. You can just, so, so we just use the idea that they are independent variables to calculate their, their, uh, their the product of v x and v y, the average of the product of v x and v y. Okay. Now, the next problem okay, is from quantum mechanics. So, here you are told that a quantum mechanical particle has a wave function given by this. Okay. Using the usual methods of quantum mechanics, calculate average value of x, p x and x p x. So, so, what I mean by the usual methods of quantum mechanics is that average value of x is given by integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi of x. Now, psi of x is a real function. So, psi of x, x, psi of x, dx. So, I do not need to write a complex conjugate here. <coughs> and uh, this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity alpha by pi raised to half x e to the minus alpha x square. So, I have x square by 2, but I am multiplying it twice by itself. Uh, so, I get this and clearly this is equal to 0. <coughs> okay. Now, average value of p x is integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi of x into i h cross dou by dou x <coughs> minus minus i h cross dou by dou x of psi of x dx. Okay. So, so now uh, if I uh, so, so I can write this as minus i h cross integral minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, let me write this alpha by pi raised to pi raised to half outside. I have integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus alpha x square by 2. Now, I have to take a derivative of e to the minus alpha x square by 2. Now, derivative of e to the minus alpha x square by 2 is uh, e to the minus alpha x square by 2 into derivative of alpha x square by 2 which is just alpha x. And you can again see that you have an odd function, you have x times e to the minus alpha x square by 2, okay. alpha is a constant. So, I can write this equal to 0. Okay. Now, next uh, you are asked to calculate the average value of x p x integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, I will take the alpha by pi raised to half and then what I will have is e to the minus alpha x square by 2 times x into minus i h cross dou by dou x of e to the minus alpha x square by 2 dx. <coughs> so, now what I will have is alpha by pi <coughs> raised to half minus i h cross and then what I have is integral minus infinity to plus infinity. e to the minus alpha x square by 2 and uh, now I just take this. So, I have alpha, I will take the alpha outside and now I have alpha, alpha x into x. So, x into alpha x that is alpha x square. So, I will take the alpha outside x square e to the minus alpha x square by 2 dx. So, so I can write this as minus i h cross alpha times alpha by pi raised to half integral minus infinity to plus infinity x square e to the minus alpha x square dx. 
so so I have to evaluate this integral and I can use gamma functions okay I will use a little trick to evaluate this integral okay so a little trick to evaluate this integral. So uh, we will write uh, integral of minus infinity to plus infinity x square e to the minus alpha x square dx is equal to minus d by d alpha of integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus alpha x square dx. <coughs> so if I do d by d alpha of this then I will get the same thing and then I will have to take the derivative of this so that is minus uh, x square. So I am taking derivative with respect to alpha so I will get minus x square so that is uh, and then uh, so I can write this in this way okay and now I am taking the minus derivative of that so the minus will go away. So this is minus d by d alpha square root of pi by alpha is equal to 1 over 2. Now you have square root of pi divided by alpha to the 3 half so I will write it as 2 alpha square root of pi by alpha. minus sign will cancel that. So, so, uh, so then this integral is just 1 over 2 alpha square root of pi over alpha okay and uh, so then so then the what you will get is just uh, minus i h cross now what you have is uh, by 2 that is all you have minus i h cross by 2 okay. Now uh, this seems like a strange result okay that x times p x is this but you should remember that in quantum mechanics x and p x are not commuting variables okay and so and so you often uh, when you take the product of x and p x okay you have to anti symmetrize it okay and then and then only you will get a uh, you you will get a, a real variable okay so 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 remember uh, x p x is not hermitian okay so x p x is not is not a hermitian operator in quantum mechanics okay so that's why that's why you got a, even you got an average value which is complex okay or, or which, which is imaginary in this case so uh, so what i now 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 also also notice that average value of x and average value of px are zero so so x times px is not equal to average value of x times average value of px okay uh, so for this particular problem x times px is not, uh, average value of x px is not equal to average value of x times average value of px in this case you would say that uh, x and px are actually are correlated in some sense okay but uh, but uh, we should also keep in mind that uh, you know uh, x uh, uh, x times px is not a hermitian operator so uh, things will be quite different in this case okay so uh, i will conclude uh, module 11 with this okay and uh, and uh, we will we will start module 12 the following week thank you